Hey everybody, Freddy here with another video. One of my subscribers asked a very important question on my last video about Azure File Sync permissions. So I decided to create this video where we're going to go into exactly how the permissions are kept when you have an Azure File Sync configuration of two different sites, New York, London, synchronized into an Azure File Sync as standalone servers, how the permissions are kept or not. And also we're going to start looking at another configuration where you introduce a domain controller in New York and both sites are connected to that domain controller. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get to it. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is let's talk about the configuration that we're going to use in this demo. We are going to use the same configuration that we used in the other video. If you haven't watched the other video, please do so. It'll help you figure out how we configure this scenario here. Uh, so we have a standalone server in New York that has a public folder. And we also have a standalone server in London that has a public UK folder or shared um, that users connect into. So if you drop a file in the public folder in New York, it gets replicated to the public UK folder in London. And if you drop a file in public UK in London, that file gets replicated to New York as well. And the data is replicated using port 443 up to Azure File Sync. But before we get into the details on how the permissions are kept or not kept, let's get this out of the way. Let's talk about the, the way that Windows handles permissions or handle accounts. When you create a user account in a Windows system, it doesn't matter if it's Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server, um, you create what we call the username or uh, an account. In this case, I, I'm using F Dubon. So it can be anything, Charlie, Jerry, whatever you want to do. Um, so you create a computer, excuse me, a username. The computer also creates what is called a SID. A SID is a security identifier, which is a very long string of numbers and characters. And a lot of times, most people don't know what they mean. So let's get this out of the way because we're going to see it again in the demo. The S indicates that the, that the string is an SID. This is how the system identifies that. Then the number one that follows it, it just means the revision level. And it has been number one since inception. So it's been number one for a very long time. Uh, the number five is the identifier authority. So typically it's a five for NT authority. So we're going to be uh, seeing a five here. And then the string that follows that, which is a very long string, is, is the one that identifies if this account is either a domain account or a local account. And then the last four digits is what is considered the RID, the relative identifier, which typically is four numbers and is typically 1,000 or greater. Again, we're going to see this again when we start looking at the permissions and how they get um, transferred from one place to the other. So now we're going to get into the demo. Let's go ahead and see that in action. Okay, so now I am on the New York server. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an account. So add an account under users, new user. I'm going to say F Dubon and it's going to be Freddy. create. So I have an F Dubon account. So that created an account. And remember that I said that every account has a SID. So let's go ahead and check the SID that is going to be assigned to this. Um, the command that we're going to type is WMIC user account where name equals F Dubon get name and SID. So here is the F Dubon account and the SID that was created. Again, we're going to come back to this in a few minutes. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave it here, right? Just so we can see it. We're going to go to the public folder. Like I said, we have a public folder here. We are going to be looking at the security. Uh, I'm going to be adding the newly created F Dubon account and I'm going to give it full access to this folder. 
Okay, okay. Now fdubon has full access to this public folder and this is just for a test. I'm going to create a new file called test from New York. This is a test file created in New York. All right, let's save this. If we look at the permissions, inherited permissions, and this file is F Dubon or Freddy has full access. All right, so now let's go to London. Let's go to the London server, and the file is already there. Again, this is under File Public UK folder. Test from New York is here. It was just uh, created. If I double click here, this is a test file created in New York. All right, so that's fine. Now, what happened to the permissions here? Permissions are go to security. As you can see, there is um, there's an account here. It says account unknown. But what I want you to look uh, pay attention to is the SID. So it has an S15 da, 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 and then it has a 1002 at the end. So this 1000, so 7960-1002. The, so the string, so we're going to remember 7960 and we're going to look at the 1002. So let's go to, let's go back to New York. And what was the SID 7960-1002. So the system knows that there is an account called FDubon with this SID. But because London does not have an FDubon account, it just recognizes the SID and it says, I, I know of a SID, I just don't know what account that is. And if I go to London and I create an FDubon, the FDubon in London will not have the same SID. So there is no way for you to keep those permissions across when you have a standalone server. So as you can see in the demo, uh, what happened was that in this case, two servers, so FDubon was created in New York, it had a SID. Then when you go to London, that SID still, ex or that this, the file knows that there is a configuration. It knows that there is an ACL on that file, but it doesn't know that SID. It does not know that account. So in this configuration, we're not going to be able to keep the permissions because, again, the permissions are going to are, are, are different. There is no central authority for the permissions. Yes, the file that is going to be created in London will inherit permissions that you assign in London. So you can do that. You can create, uh, you know, a, 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 a share on that side and you can assign NTFS permissions. You can uh, assign shared permissions but you have to manually do it on both ends. Now that we are done with this test, we're gonna to jump to the next test. The next test is we're gonna introduce an Active, Do Active Directory domain controller. We're gonna put it in New York, and somehow you're gonna have access to that domain controller in London, either a VPN connection, MPLS connection, that's beyond the talk of this video. Uh, we're just going to assume that there is network connectivity between the two sites and that a domain controller in New York can be used to authenticate the domain, the file server in London. So let's go ahead and get to that demo now. Okay, so this is my domain controller. I'm going to log into this domain controller. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user. So I'm going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. I have a domain called botan.local. So I'm going to go into the user section and I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to call it Freddy, last name, domain, and the user logon name is going to be f.dubon so I can differentiate the accounts and the password. and finish. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test, make sure that synchronization is taking place before we jump into the permissions.
Okay, so we're creating this in the New York server. And then we're gonna jump to the London server. Uh, London server. And we're gonna check, make sure that the replication is taking place. Public UK. Uh, new file test. Here's the domain test. And the the contents haven't have not been replicated yet, but the file, the metadata has. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to check is the properties and the security of this. That unknown f account still there. Um, so anyway, we're going to leave it at that for 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 now. Now that I know that the replication is taking place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a Windows 10 system that I have here that is on. It's in New York. It's uh, Windows 10 New York, and I'm I'm going to connect to the public folder in New York. This IP address happens to be the New York server. So I'm going to use the fdubon at boton.local and enter my password. Okay, so I'm going to map a network drive to this one. I'm going to connect the, the Z drive. And there it is. So at this point, I have full access uh, to this folder. I'm going to create a new folder. And on this one, I'm going to disable the inheritance. Okay. So disable inheritance, remove all inherited, add. Select principle. And so I will have read and execute and list. That's all. FDubon is only going to have that access to that folder. And that's all the access that I'm going to give it. So now if I create a new text document, you need permissions to perform this action. So now it's all that pretty much all that is uh, that is done. So now let's go to the London server and this is a read only read only folder I'm gonna double click on it you don't have permissions to this folder again the, the reason I don't have permission to this folder is because I am not logged in as Freddy um, I don't you must have read permissions but this the user that is logged in right now is administrator so this is the reason why i'm not able to to get to this folder however if i go to a system that i'm going to call w10 london so this is another workstation but this is a different workstation in london so i'm going to do um, same thing that we did before connect to the london server the london server should be 172030 32.39 F dot Dubon at Botan dot local and I'm able to see this share and this is a read only folder and I have permissions to it. Can I create something here? No, because I only have read read only access to this folder. Okay, so as, as you can see, as long as I have line of sight to the domain controller and I have a server that is joined to the domain and I'm able to log in with the credentials, the Azure file share, the Azure file sync and the Azure file share are able to take that, take those permissions and send them over across. So the Azure file share itself does not need to be added 
or, at, or join to the domain for those permissions to traverse over through the file share, file sync, and to the other side. Those permissions are still working even though the Azure file share was not joined to this Active Directory domain. Only the bottom portion, if you noticed, the file share in New York was joined to the domain, the workstations were joined to the domain, and also the London server was joined to the domain, and that and there is a communication to that domain controller. So all of that, the data flowing up to Azure and down to the other server, do respect the permissions that you set on both ends. I hope this video was beneficial to you. And if you have any questions on any of the permissions or anything that I missed, please let me know in the descriptions down below. I love to hear from you. Like I said, this video was created because somebody asked a question about permissions. I hope this was beneficial and I will see you on the next one.